We're going to read from uh, uh, Buddhism, from Zen Buddhism. It's actually, it's Zen Master Dahan. Uh, it's called the Find the Treasure Within. The Buddhism and Daily Life. Now, this is a Korean Zen master. Who is it said that Zen Buddhism is for artists and mindfulness is for psychologists? <laughs> so, we prefer, don't we prefer uh, Zen Buddhism? If you're an artist, you'll prefer Zen Buddhism. If, but if you're a psychologist, you'll have to take have to take mindfulness training. <laughs> That's why we prefer Zen. But anyways, this is a woman uh, Zen master, Dahan. We got this from the Han Ma Um International uh, Temple in Flushing, Queens. Anyways, and there's a nice, cute little beginning poem here. It's like a poem in a way, so I don't know if she wrote poems. Mm -hmm. It says, look at how water flows when it meets a hole. It fills it and continues to flow. When water meets a rock, it flows around it. The path to finding your true self is like this. So now she says water goes down the hole and then the water goes around the rock. It's a matter of going your feet. So she's into flow, things flowing. <laughs> a Zen Buddhist likes things to flow very smoothly. <laughs> the least, the path of least. Oh, that's hole. <laughs> the water, it's like water. Anyway, this book is a collection of several questions asked to Zen Master Dahan, D A E H A E N G, and the answer she gave. The overall theme is that is that suggested by the title. There is a great treasure within us, and to find it, we have to search within ourselves, not anywhere else. Regardless of the things we face, the strength to face them together with wisdom and energy all arise from only one place. Our foundation, our Buddhahood. That's, I guess the foundation is Buddha nature. Buddha nature, something. Our, in fact, our foundation is already doing everything. So Sun Master Dahan teaches people to trust in its ability and to entrust everything we face to that foundation and to keep observing while moving forward while we experiment with what comes back out. He reminds us to let go of even the things we learn and experience. Our foundation knows all about what we have experienced so we don't need to worry about forgetting those things. So what we learn, well, we don't have to worry about forgetting. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry. Although this may sound easy, we have to make the effort to actually do it, although it may sound a bit vague. With practice, it becomes a wide open path that frees us from all our habits and karma by continually melting down the narrow-mindedness, greed, and anger that are hidden within us. We are left free to become true human beings. This is what we are intended for when we were born into this world. Zen Masters Dahin was born in 1920 in Seoul. After several enlightenment experiences and many years practicing in the mountains, she started the, the first Han Mahum, Zen Center, in order to teach people about the treasure within themselves and to help them to learn to rely upon that in all things they face. All right. <sighs> hmm. What is Buddhism? Buddhism, Buddha, Buddha. Ugo, 
in Korean exists throughout every moment of our daily life. The first syllable of bile means to everlasting foundation of life. The second syllable of gyo means to everything communicating and working together. This combination describes our life rooted in our foundation of communicating and working together with all life. So we're supposed to be rooted in our foundation and connected to everything. In fact, the life and activity of all things is itself Buddhism. Buddhism teaches us the truth that all things share the same mind, the same life, the same body, work together as one and share as one. While showing us this, Buddhism encourages us to discover for ourselves who we are and what life really means. <sighs> that mean we're not really separated or we're like the one and the same? <laughs> hmm? You've been calling this way. <laughs> now we have no separate identity. What is true self? When a tree's root is gathered with soil, we cannot see it, but nobody doubts that it's there or that the root is the source of the tree's life. We human beings also have a root that's not visible. This root is completely empty with nothing to grasp, but it is the source of everything. We have such a big thing about emptiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's not Something inside is empty. Like in science, but nothing is just nothing. Well, you know, they say atoms are very empty inside. So you need to need know that we also live by relying upon our root. Our root is our Buddha's, Buddha nature, our true self. When we are told to believe in ourselves, people often think this means our physical bodies or our intellect. But this isn't who we really are. Our flesh is only temporary. We change it like we change clothes. What then makes our body move? When our body becomes worn out and is ready to be thrown away, who is the one in charge of taking off the old clothes and putting on new ones? It is our true self. The true self, Buddha nature, is our foundation, eternal life in the foundation that embraces the entire universe. It is light and boundless energy. It possesses all abilities and wisdom. Such a treasure is within you and within every human being. So if we awaken to the Buddha nature within us, we will realize that all beings are Buddha as they are. The Buddha came to this world not to be worshipped, but rather to teach people to free themselves by relying upon their own inherent Buddha nature. Goodness. Ah. <sighs> Comment? Mm -hmm. yeah, Buddha nature could be your soul, can it? It's the same thing, sorrow. Yeah, it's uh, all the same thing. Is it the spirit there? Is it God there? Mm -hmm. Why does my life seem empty? Question. Question one. My life has been very ordinary, but I've been fortunate in many respects. My wife and I get along well, and my children are happy and well-adjusted. Also, my work has been going smoothly. Nevertheless, I sometimes feel empty, like something is missing. That's Why? Poem. Do you remember my poem about the emptiness? Yeah, I don't remember what's your poem about emptiness. Uh, I think it's like, what is that we really? What is that we want? That's why we, why we suffer and we feel empty, because... We got what we got, and we just don't know what we want yet. What we can do in the future is do poetry readings of our own poetry, your poetry and mine. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That way. Why should we read somebody else's poetry? <laughs> <laughs> Why should I read somebody else's book? <laughs> From now on, we're just going to read my own books. Just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes, nevertheless, I sometimes feel empty, like something is missing. Why do I feel like this, even though everything in my life seems to be going well? Well, 
everything seems to be going well. Of course, there's something to fill up in the middle. Just people don't realize. You don't, without meditation, you're basically empty. It's like you're not eating if you don't meditate. You're starving to death. Where's your phone? All right. Answer. A wife, a lover, children, money, fame, none of these things have the power to make you feel poem? complete. Your poem. Mm -hmm. What, are you going to look for your poem? Part two, right? Well, you can put it in the next reading. Or... I don't, I, it's funny, I don't know how to stop you. Hmm? Stop and start. How do you stop and start a recording? <laughs> Seems I have no, no, all not knowingness. <laughs> I've achieved all not knowingness. <laughs> not how not to do, know how, know anything. <laughs> Can you become complete only by returning to your? However, many people are afraid of truly facing themselves, so they look for something outside, wandering around, rather than looking within themselves. This is how they deceive themselves. As long as you desire deceive yourself like this, you can never know true peace, nor will the empty feeling go away, because both are caused by not knowing your true self. When you carefully observe your mind and live your life in touch with your inner mind, you'll realize that peace is within you. However, if you don't sincerely face yourself, you can never be truly free of this empty feeling, even if you achieve all your goals, such as having power, money, honor, love. This applies to everyone. The more praise, the more pleasant pleasure you receive from outside of yourself, the deeper the emptiness becomes. Here, what is your poem? Uh, from where? From there? Even the greatest of our achievements do not completely or for long satisfy it. Fame, power, talent, wealth, wisdom one day will leave us empty or will leave room for emptiness. She just said that, that the more empty you get, em, em, the more power and money you have, the more empty you get. Immeasurable emptiness, vast void, and we'll wander again and again. What is it that we want? No amount of earthly goods will fill the void or equal it in power. That secret force is active without end. At times we are distracted and we forget, but not for long. We come back to the same question. What is it we want? What? will equal that force and power. Gosh, the universe expands faster and farther, yet truly in our mind, how much space does it possess? Truly very small. The small area of our brain will light up and then off the light will go and again and again it will light up in small areas, a few neurons only. Like within the atom, the void is bigger. Like dark energy and dark matter, the void within the universe is infinitely vaster. Within us, the same the void is vast. How much of the world, what size of a universe, could ever occupy completely our brain, distract our mind for long, forever? What on this earth, life, love, fame, beauty, can light up our brain completely, occupy our mind entirely for long, for very long, forever? What is it that we want? What secret thing, what force holds us from one point, that that same point that started the world and leads us towards the unknown? Is it the unknown that we want? We do not like all that is present in heaven, want to drift along towards the unknown. For it appears to me, as soon as we know of one thing, it becomes small in our brain, occupies a teeny space, just a few cells, and soon we forget it. Even one universe or many, even the notion of infinity in our mind occupies a finite place, past, present, anticipated, future. The universe of 14 billion years old fits in a cell in our mind and time zero. My goodness, dear. This is a poetry of... Buddhism. What's your name? You want your name? What is that you want? Of a... Of a... Pericula. Of who? Har pericula. This is a reading from a local poem, yes, like a local poet. 
which sort of coincide is the poem is called what is it that we want oh just went over time